Hey everybody, welcome to part three of three for my Grim Trigger strategy and collusion stuff. Uh, part one, I introduced the discount factor and discounted profits in the future. I Part two, I introduced the Grim Trigger strategy and the lifetime payoffs of firms based on whether or not they follow it. And in this one, I talk about whether Grim Trigger strategy can be in equilibrium what has to be true for it to be in equilibrium, including the minimum discount factor. Grim trigger strategy only works if firms meet some minimum level of patience. So we'll get into that as well. So let's get started. When is grim trigger strategy an equilibrium strategy? Like all game theory, there's one main way you know if something's an equilibrium strategy. And that is when there is no incentive to deviate. Meaning, my strategy is the best thing I can be doing. So no incentive to deviate from the plan. So for both firms, you would need the profit from their grim trigger strategy to be greater than the profit from cheating. You would need the profit from colluding to be greater than the profit from cheating. So what's for firm A, that means you would need to see that the discounted stream of collusive profits is greater than cheating profits plus the discounted stream of future corn oak profits. Now we see here, because pi cheat is greater than pi m, there will be a temptation for us to give up future payoffs of decreasing collusive profit to corn oak profit, uh, of making that switch in favor of getting a higher payoff today and so there's your collusion here's your cheating that is a really important equation as we'll show in just a minute for firm b you get the same idea you need for their collusion to be more profitable than cheating and then cornoing so that hasn't changed they look the same that way if those are both true if both of those equations are true, then repeated collusion is a Nash equilibrium in the repeated game. So let me repeat, repeat that. If both of those equations are true, then collusion is a Nash equilibrium. So let's move on and talk about when that might happen. How patient does a firm need to be to ignore that short-term gains from cheating. Or a different way of phrasing it more mathematically, what's the minimum discount factor, delta, that sustains collusion? For each firm, we want to see something like this. And so I'm interested in the discount factor that makes that true. So I'm going to do a bunch of algebra. I'm going to multiply everything times 1 minus delta on both sides. And I get that, collusive profit equals 1 minus delta times cheating profit plus delta corno profit. Rearrange things, rearrange things, rearrange things. And then you get this, that the delta, your discount factor, has to be greater than pi cheat minus collusive profit over pi cheat minus corno profit. I know I went pretty fast through there, but this is a video, so you can pause if you need to see all the steps. That delta, if delta is greater than that fraction, then this firm sees the grim trigger strategy as their best option. So that is a required situation in order for this to be an equilibrium. So let's do a little scenario. Uh, where two identical firms, if they cheat, they get 1200 bucks. If they get collusive, they get 900 bucks. And if they corno, they get 600 bucks. Uh, I picked very easy numbers. These are actually numbers you would have to solve for. See my other videos on corno and collusion and such for details on that. But that would mean pi cheats 1200 minus pi m is 900 over 1200 minus 600, that's 300 over 600, that's 
and that has to be less than or equal to the delta. So what's that mean? It means that when we combine these payoffs, if delta is greater than 0.5, they'll play GTS, or Grim Trigger Strategy. And if not, they won't. So the more patient a firm is, the more likely it is to collude. And this gives us some sort of a threshold. If they value future dollars half as much as present dollars or more, these firms will collude. But if they had a lower discount factor, then they wouldn't. A uh, couple of side notes just for fun. Uh, if the cheating profit gets bigger, then your discount factor cutoff has to go up. So the bigger the short-term payoff for cheating gets, the more patient you have to be to ignore it. If collusive profits gets bigger, well, that increases the benefits of collusion. You don't have to be as patient to wait for it. And so that actually lowers the threshold cutoff. And then lastly, if Corno profits get bigger, that means that the future stream of Corno payments isn't as bad for when you cheat, and so it increases the cutoff for collusion. Um, so those are just some comparative statics. Yeah, I don't know if this video was helpful to you, but hopefully it was. If not, too bad. Good luck, you guys. Thanks for watching, and happy econing.